welcome to Live in the Messiah's Love. I'm your host, Kamisha Lucier, and if this is your first time with us, welcome, and if you are returning, welcome back. We're so glad to have this time with you in the Word of God, and before we get into the Word today, let's take a moment and open up in prayer. Lord, we just thank you. We invite you in, Holy Spirit, and we welcome you, and we just readily acknowledge that All dominion, all power and authority belongs to you, Lord. And the fullness of the Godhead, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit dwells in you, Lord Jesus Christ. You are the way, the truth, and the life. And all things are done and upheld according to the word of your power. We love you, God. We exalt your name, Jesus Christ. And we just decree decree and declare that, Jesus, you are Lord of all. God of all things good, and you are a good and perfect God. We release you, Holy Spirit, to have your way here. Let your kingdom come and your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Fulfill your word, Lord, your promises and your purpose here in this time that we spend together in your word. Minister to your your people, Lord, the believers who are listening and participating with us. Keep them, strengthen them, guide them, protect them and provide for them, Lord. Continue, continue to cultivate their courage in trusting in your name and their faithfulness in following you, Lord, and bring everything together for your divine purpose in your name in their lives. Thank you for that so much, Lord. We receive it and we believe it's done. We count it finished in the almighty name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Welcome, honey. Thank you for being here. Well, thank you for having me. It's a, a pleasure, a blessing as always to, well, do the Lord work of the Lord side by side with you and for his glory. Amen. Amen. Um, also, I wanted to say before I forget, and I, I believe I'll remember, and so I'll say it twice, but tomorrow is Christmas. So I just wanted to say Merry Christmas to everyone. Mm-hmm. Um, Merry Christmas. God bless you to, to have an enjoyable time in his presence and um, fellowshipping, even if it's just you or if it's a small gathering or a large gathering, go in the peace and the grace of God and be fulfilled and satisfied in the moment, be present in the moment and enjoy what God is providing for you, whatever that might be. All right. We are still doing case studies. And so we are going to read, um, three springboard scriptures for today's episode. Um, the first one is going to be Mark 16 verses 15 through 18. Um, then it'll be Luke 4, 18 through 19, and then 2 Corinthians 1 through 20. And we're just going to run through these just so we can get the Word of God right at the forefront of our mind Amen. and be looking at these words in context of the categorical promises and authority that's already been granted to us because we are believers. So my love, will you go ahead and um, read that for us? I'm going to begin Mark 16, 15 through 18. And he said to them, Go into all the world and preach the gospel to all creation. He who has believed and has been baptized shall be saved, but he who has disbelieved shall be condemned. These signs will accompany those who have believed. In my name they will cast out demons, they will speak with new tongues, they will pick up serpents, and if they drink any deadly poison it will not hurt them. They will lay hands on the sick, and they will recover. Amen. Luke 4, 18 and 19. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim release to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind, to set free those who are oppressed, to proclaim the favorable year of the Lord. Amen. Amen to that. And our last categorical promise authority or authoritative springboard scripture, 2 uh, Corinthians 1, verse 20, says, For as many as are the promises of God, in him they are yes. Therefore also through him is our amen to the glory of God through us. Amen. So if you look at Mark 16, uh, the verses we read there, and Luke 4, those are basically the same. They overlay on top of each other. They're articulated different, differently, but they are the same 
promise and it's a fact. Remember, these are facts of God's word. Um, if you are a believer, this is going, this is available to you. This authority has been given to you and it covers every category where you can exercise it, where you can use it. Um, Mark 16 told us to go and preach the gospel to every creature or to creation, depending on what your translation says. And then Luke four tells us the the gospel that Jesus Christ was preaching (laughs) and what it did. That's the same thing we see outlined in Mark 16. And then second Corinthians one 20 tells us it's yes. From God's perspective, it's yes. And to him, so be it. Amen. But also our amen coming in agreement where two or more are gathered. His word is here in the earth still, and we agree with it, even if you don't have a group of people. The power that comes when you combine your faith with the word of God that's already present is unstoppable. So link up with it. And our amen is, yes, sir, I not only believe it, I allow myself to be persuaded by it. I agree with you, and I'm going to do it. Amen. And that's what we were talking about, case studies and learning from... Well, the master, our Lord and Savior, Amen. Jesus the Christ, right? Amen. The pattern and or our pattern and example. And what did he say frequently concerning his word that was spoken? With the the word being spoken and then coming into agreement with it, he would start off by saying, Truly, truly, I say to you. Mm-hmm. Same thing. It's the exact same thing as the word of the Lord being spoken and us saying amen or so be it, coming into agreement with it. He led with that. Mm-hmm. Amen. Absolutely. So as we look at the word, we're looking at what he did with full faith and confidence. There's something dynamic about the word of God and allowing yourself to be persuaded by the word that's preached to you. That's the same thing God said about Abraham. Abraham believed God and it was accounted to him for righteousness. It didn't say Abraham had everything figured out. It didn't say Abraham felt like a father of many nations. It didn't say he saw any children. Being Believing God is being persuaded or convinced that what God is saying to you is absolutely the truth. So when we mix that, our faith with the Word of God saying, this is available to you, go and do it. Take my authority in my name and go do these works. The fact is that God will be there to support his word and our obedience to his word going forth. Amen? Amen. Amen. Okay, so we're going to look back at Mark 9, um, and we talked about this um, already mostly in the previous episode, but we're going to just go over a couple of things here. Uh, When we read it, we looked over it in the previous episode. We focused mostly on Jesus's actions. He wasn't disturbed. He wasn't moved. He was absolutely confident that once the word of God went forth, it was going to be carried out. It did not matter what the adversary did, what it looked like, how the symptoms appeared. um, And they actually got worse before they got better the appearance of the symptoms. And one thing I've always appreciated about um, faith teachers like Brother um, Kenneth e. Hagen and Brother Copeland and the like, they, they have a saying, I'm not moved by what I see. I'm not moved by what I feel. I'm only moved by the word of God. And what they're saying is I'm not persuaded by what I see. I'm not persuaded or concerned about what I feel. I'm mm-hmm. only persuaded or focused on or concerned about what the word of God says. That's the commander of the heavenly hosts or the Lord's armies. That's what we should be concerned with. Amen. That's where the orders are coming from. Amen. That we're to follow. Amen. And so we need to take to our heart and to our focus that when the word of God, we take the time to get the word, right? We don't go off without the Lord and make assumptions. We're not governed by our flesh or our feelings, but we get the word of God. And when we release it and we do what the Lord asked us to do, we have every bit of confidence that the name of Jesus will do its part and do what it's supposed to do. So prior to Jesus coming to this um, situation in Mark 9, uh, verses 16 through 29, I think he might have started at 14 yesterday. The disciples were the first ones that were attempting to deal with this Mm -hmm. demonic spirit, this oppression in this young, this, uh, I don't know how old he was, but someone's son. And they could not. 
And then let's look at verse 19 of Mark chapter nine. And what does the Lord say to them? He answered him and said, O faithless generation, how long shall I be with you? How long shall I bear with you? Bring him to me. So he told us what the issue was with the disciples and maybe a little bit with the, the, the boy's father. The issue was a lack of faith. Amen. And he's already told us that if you had the faith, faith the size of a grain of mustard seed, you'd say to this mountain, be thou removed and be cast into the sea or the sycamine tree. Um, it's related a little bit differently in different gospels, but you tell it to be uprooted and cast into the sea and it would obey you. And likewise, we already read in Mark 16 that we would cast out demons, right? Absolutely. And for them specifically, these disciples had already been granted power and authority to go and do that. And they had demonstrated it previously. But for some reason, when they got to this situation, their faith waned, their faith Mm -hmm. um, lessened, or they were afraid. And usually that's the biggest thing that hinders our faith is fear, Mm -hmm. whether it's a lack of confidence, whether it's a feeling of uncertainty, what was going to happen? What should I do? those kind of things. And those happen because we haven't taken the opportunity to ask God and we haven't elevated our esteem of the name of Jesus Christ or understood and highly valued that his name is doing the work. All we have to do is be obedient and show up and do what he asks us to do. Absolutely. And and, and I love that you brought that up because there is a difference in approach and it comes out of the heart right? Mm -hmm. We have been teaching and saying that all power and authority rests in the name of Jesus, Mm -hmm. and it absolutely does. Mm -hmm. And again, we're looking at case studies here. Mm -hmm. Now, when we brought this up when we were first talking about the name of Jesus, the almighty name of Jesus, has to be in relationship, Mm -hmm. because it clearly did not work out for the seven sons of Sceva. That's right. But also... Not to use it blindly. And by that, I mean, what I'm saying is this. We still have to seek the Lord, hold it up before him, the Mm -hmm. situation, circumstances, whatever it is, and ask the Lord what he wants us to say or do to then put his power and authority or his seal of approval behind it. Amen. Not to just... Oh, well, I could just use the name and throw it out there willy-nilly. Exactly. That's right. We don't use his name vainly. We don't use it idly. Exactly. And that's not just hollering out an expletive or saying a bad word. Um, That is, don't, um, we read in Peter that we should speak as the oracles of God. So if God's mouth isn't speaking on it, we should be quiet. Mm -hmm. And every time you see Jesus operating and ministering, you know that he sought counsel of the Holy Spirit first, or he was led by Holy Spirit. It doesn't mean that... um, he stopped and did a three hour prayer meeting before he cast his devil out. That's not what that means. He spent time in regular prayer before the Lord and he had a continual listening before the Lord. His channel of communication was always open to hear what the father was saying and ministering through the Holy Spirit. Um, the, Oh, you want to say something? He understood he was always and ever before his heavenly father. Exactly. When um, he was ministering concerning Lazarus. He said, I know that you always hear me, Father, but for the ones who are standing around, I'm saying it out loud. I'm saying it this way. So now you might be saying, well, I don't see that written in scripture right here. Well, we read that in John chapter eight, when Mm -hmm. we looked at our springboard scriptures in the previous episode, verses 28 through 29 and 49 through 51, he told us the secret to his success was not because he was God almighty in the flesh. It was because he only did what his father told him to do. And every time we align with him, we will have that kind of success. So back to the disciples. I know you're looking something up, honey. You just let me know when you're ready um, to talk about it. I was just going to read it. I believe it was the first one you mentioned. Yes, 28 through 29. Yes, darling. Uh, for John 8, 28 through 29. So Jesus said, when you lift up the Son of Man, then you will know that I am he, and I do nothing on my own initiative. But I speak these things as the Father taught me. And he who sent me is with me. I'll even read verse 20. He has not left me alone, for I always do the things that are pleasing to him. Amen. Um, And then read 49 through 51, please and thank you, of chapter 8. Jesus answered, 
I do not have a demon, but I honor my father, and you dishonor me. But I do not seek my glory. There is one who seeks and judges. Truly, truly, I say to you, if anyone keeps my word, he will never see death. Okay. Amen. So that's how Jesus always operated through everything. And he was telling us that this is his habit. This is his pattern. And also why he could be trusted with the spirit beyond measure. Amen. Everyone else is limited, <laughs> but he was not limited, not because he was God. He was still, his flesh was still subject to the very same things our flesh is subject to. However, he was not self-willed and he was not self-serving or self-seeking. He was not lacking in any confidence towards the father. And he was not lacking in any confidence in his relationship to the father. He was absolutely in line and in step and willing to be so. You know, we sometimes think that we can't do this because we're humans and we're flesh, but Jesus did. And he didn't do it by supernatural power of the way of he had some extra oomph that we don't have. We have the same spirit who raised Jesus Christ from the dead, living on the inside of us. We have the fullness of the Godhead dwelling on the inside of us, um, quickening our mortal bodies, instructing us, guiding us, the the, the Lord said, I'm not going to leave you an orphan. I'm going to send you a comforter. And it's better that I go mm -hmm. so that the comforter will come because he's going to fulfill this role in your life so that you can grow up into the fullness of the God of, of the fullness of the measure of the stature of man of Christ so that we can actually look like him and we can um, please the father. So yes, he's God in the flesh, but he wasn't using his deity to get by. He set that aside. And Pate became just like we were, tempted in all points, like we were, yet without sin. So I'm saying all that to encourage you. And as we're looking at the disciples, one of the biggest hindrances to faith, again, is fear and uncertainty. Uncertainty opens the door to fear because you don't know what to do. So there are circumstances that you might come across where there's adversarial um activity around you. We're just talking specifically about casting out demons mm -hmm. and exercising and remaining superior to the adversary by using the dominion and authority in the name of Jesus Christ that he said, here, take it, do. There may be times that you don't know exactly what to do. That is not a reason for you to be afraid. It's a reason for you to listen harder to the Holy Spirit. Uh, we brought this up, I believe in the last episode, but Daniel mm -hmm. is a key example. The moment he sought the Lord for the answer, it was sent. Mm -hmm. And yes, there was demonic activity mm -hmm. present and along the way. Mm -hmm. But then Daniel's faith and his resolve was to seek the Lord even harder mm -hmm. to the point of even fasting. And the fasting was not to convince God. That was to keep him in a place where his faith was active. Exactly. So that he could stay connected to God Fully. and not start bad-mouthing God, doubting God. Oh, Lord, why didn't you answer me? You should have answered by now. You never did it like this before. All those kind of things. Fully trusting the Lord. That he was faithful and would fulfill his promise. Amen. So when the disciples met this circumstance, the Lord expected them to listen to him, and to behave accordingly. Mm -hmm. the, Jesus would not have had this um, response to them in Mark 9, verse 19, if they weren't capable of handling the situation based on the information and the authority he had already given them. Now, I want to tell you this. So you, you might be saying, well, Jesus hadn't died yet, so they weren't doing it in his name. Well, they were because he sent them and he said, go. Even though he didn't articulate it exactly the same way that he said it in uh, Mark 16, when he said to them, I give you authority, go, mm -hmm. it was the same thing as saying, in my name, go do these things. Go ahead, honey. Actually, we could go even back to the Old Testament. He says very plainly in Scripture, if you are willing and obedient, well, an unwilling person is not going to listen. They're not even going to ask. Mm -hmm. to listen. The Lord's saying if you're, if, right, so conditional, if you are willing and obedient, the obedience is a demonstration of our love to for the Lord, mm -hmm. our faith or trust in Him, and our hope or our future. So the faith for the moment, but also eternally being put and placed in him. And that is, again, demonstrated through our obedience. So this, there's no difference here. This kind doesn't come up by prayer 
and fasting. We have to seek the Lord. We have to be willing and seek the Lord for his will concerning the situation and circumstance. And then the fasting part is ensuring that there is a removal of anything that will prevent us from hearing what he's saying, but then also prevent us from doing, carrying out, being obedient to what he's just commanded us to do. Amen. Amen. Thank you, my love. So position yourself to trust the Lord and be willing to ask. We're going to use our faith intentionally. We're going to trust that when the word of God goes forth, it is finished. The task, whatever it is, is done. And we are going to take the time to ask God the right kinds of questions. What should we do? But trusting that it's not a, if it be your will, God, let me cast this demon out. No, 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 no. I reject that and I rebuke it in the name of Jesus. That's not the truth. And that kind of question, that kind of stance is not truth in life. It's God, you've already given me authority. So Amen. you just point me in the right direction. You tell me what to do, and I'm going to go get it done. You tell me what to say, and I'm That's going right. to say it. That's right. And it may be lay your in hands. Your name. It may be speak a word. It, and in this case, the Lord said, deaf and dumb spirit, I command you, come out of him and enter him no more. We would say, in the name of Jesus, deaf and dumb spirit, I command you, come out of him and enter him no more. Or beginning at, or at the front of it or the end of it, we would mm-hmm. use the name of Jesus to deliver the same command that he did. And Absolutely. the Holy Spirit will give you utterance as you go how to do those things. So we're always confident in him. And, and revelation. Because Understanding. That's what revealing I mean. Revealing what's happening. You're right. Through Holy Spirit. Mm-hmm. How would he have known that the spirit was deaf and dumb or... Mute, right? right, because the father didn't say that. He didn't said nothing concerning those things. Um, he just said, uh, "Let's see." He said he was mute, and that he was having having seizures. But the Lord, because of the revelation of the Holy Spirit, knew it was a deaf and dumb spirit. Exactly. So, it, again, as you just said, through revelation. So now he knew exactly how to address it. He didn't ask the demonic spirit about it, right? He received it from the Lord through Holy Spirit because that's truth. Amen. And that that's another side note. I know that in the example of the demoniac, the Lord asked a question, but that was based on the Father's leading. We're not to go mm-hmm. around having conversations with demons. Why? Or well, looking to do that. The only conversation is, it's one way, get out in the name of Jesus. Whatever the Father tells us to say, the ultimate boiling down of it is you're bound and you're cast out <laughs> in the name of Jesus. So exactly. establish that in your mind. Um, and operate and, by the and leading of the Holy this Spirit. In previous episodes, but mm-hmm. it, again, it bears repeating, right? And it's a safeguard for us. Talking, talking about Satan, the adversary, the devil. He says when he speaks, he or he is the father of lies, and when he speaks, he speaks in his native tongue. Mm-hmm. So that is all you are going to receive, in or from the adversary. Amen and, to that. And his. I'll say minions or demonic forces that have aligned with him. Amen. Amen. So let's look at the the book that we're reading. um, Page 79 of The Name of Jesus by Kenneth E. Hagin. On page 79, he, um, I would say about the third paragraph on the page, He's talking about a an event, a ministry opportunity that he was ministering at and how the Lord began to move. And it lasted longer than it was expected to last. And he was just flowing with the Lord in that, um, that space and that time to minister as he opened the door and gave opportunity. But then he said um, that he was praying in between services. This one afternoon between services, I was in one of the Sunday school rooms praying about the night service. I had grown tired on my knees and was laying flat on my back on the carpet, praying in other tongues. Suddenly, the Spirit of God spoke to me about my son-in-law, Buddy Harrison. Reverend Harrison is at this writing, founding uh, pastor of Faith Christian Fellowship in Tulsa, Oklahoma. He is also president of Harrison House Publishers. Reverend Harrison went home to be with the Lord November 28, 1998. Um, Reverend Harrison is today an elder in the body of Christ, but in 1963, he had problems. He was unable to stay with anything. He would not keep a job. He would just quit and walk off. He wouldn't stay in church. 
One time we would see him, he would be in church leading the choir and everything would be fine. The next time we would see him, he would be out of church and he would walk up to me and blow cigar smoke in my face. I never said anything. I just loved him. I knew the devil had a hold of him. He was a roller coaster or a yo-yo Christian up and down, in and out. So while I was laying there flat on my back, praying in other tongues about the night service, suddenly the spirit of God said to me, there are three demons that follow Buddy around. I had a quick spiritual vision. I saw him walking down the sidewalk. What looked like three little dogs were following him. One on the right edge of the sidewalk, one on the left edge, one in the middle. The spirit of God said he will turn to the right and yield to the demon on the right. Then he will turn and yield to the demon on the left. Then he will turn and yield to the demon in the center. It seems at times that he is almost a different person. Whatever the demon was that he yielded to, Buddy would act that way. Relatives had even remarked, I don't understand Buddy. Is he schizophrenic? Buddy was a born again, spirit filled Christian. But just because you are filled with the Holy Spirit does not mean you are incapable of yielding to the devil. You still have a will of your own. You can yield to the devil and let the devil dominate you anytime you want. You can yield to the flesh and let the flesh dominate you. You can yield to the world and let the world dominate you. The Bible teaches that we have to deal with the world, the flesh and the devil, but you do not have to yield to any of these. Thank God. So as he goes on, um, the Lord gave him a word, um, and told him to speak to those spirits and command them in the name of Jesus to desist in their maneuvers, command them to stop. So Brother Hagen did that and his son-in-law was delivered and set free and went on to live his life in service to the Lord, faithful service to the Lord and turned down um, lucrative job opportunities because he just wanted to do the will of the Lord. And you can take the time and um, finish reading, reading all of that. Um, that was there, uh, all the way through for, uh, cha- um, sorry, page 82, but the parts that I want to bring to your attention is sometimes when we read accounts from other believers and things in the word of God, we look at, wow, the miracle we <laughs> focus in on the fireworks part of it and we neglect the steps of how they got there. And that's the exact reason that we're doing this training series and that we're looking at these case studies. So at first glance, you'd go, wow, man, Brother Hagen, he's powerful in the Lord. Man, Brother Hagen, he was, you know, he's special. He's, he's anointed and he is anointed. He is loved by God. But and so are you. Exactly. And so are you. And it is not about the vessel. You don't hold the honor that makes the word of God work. Brother Hagen didn't hold the honor, and I'm not discrediting him at one. And I'm sure if you had met him, he would have told you the same thing. It's the name of Jesus. It's the obedience to what the Lord told him to do that got the work done. And so let me take you back to page 79. Brother Hagen was just praying in the spirit. He was not praying and interceding for Buddy, for his son-in-law. The Lord intervened and said, hey, I want to deal with this right now. Why? Because God wanted Buddy set free and delivered, just like he wants for all of us. Brother Hagen was just positioned as a habit to be a willing vessel. to posi- like Praying in the Spirit, we've talked about this before, opens the door for you to hear and connect with the Lord in an unfiltered, unhindered way if you take the time and opportunity to do it. It gives the Lord a chance to speak clearly to you. Um, especially moving aside from your mind, your will, and your emotions to just deliver a a clean and pure message to you. Now he can speak to your understanding, but there's something about praying in the spirit that is more efficient (laughs) and deliberate in most cases. So he was positioned to hear from God and brother Hagen was actually trying to pray about the service and God interrupted and said, here's what I want to have done. Now, brother Hagen didn't go, no, no, shh, shh. Maybe later, God, I want to know about the service. And I'm doing the honorable thing for you, Lord. I'm doing your will, Lord. Please shut up telling me about your will when I'm trying to do your will, right? <laughs> he didn't treat the <laughs> that Lord like that. doesn't make any sense. He said, no, Lord, you're the commander. And I am here as your servant to follow your command. Amen and amen. God was doing the work and he was being in his rightful place, Brother Hagen, that is, as the subordinate Mm-hmm. and the one in service of the God who created him and his Lord and Savior who said, I have work for you to do. This is what I want done here and now. And so then he 
basically in letting the Lord articulate everything that was going on, got the instruction from the Lord. Amen. And when the Lord said, um, here's what you do, he did it, mm. right? And then he even wrote it down and kept a record in his wallet. And then the Lord told him he would hear about it at a certain amount of time. And the Lord fulfilled that. But none of that was because Brother Hagen was special or Brother Hagen had more power or he was more usable or notable by God. A brand new believer who just came into Christ can use and wield the name of Jesus Amen. Christ just like a seasoned believer that has been serving God all along and is in a uh, position or a leader, a leadership position as far as the fivefold ministry or anything like that. God will use you. He can use you. And this authority belongs to you regardless of anything else. You are just as valuable and important to God as anybody else, as the Lord and Savior himself, because he gave his son for you. He is no respecter of persons. So there go you go. What you were saying, Amen. Right? So we are all his sons and daughters equally. Not one greater than the other. Glory to God. So for us, as you were saying, honey, honey, as it pertains to if you're a new believer or you've been in the faith for decades, Mm -hmm. if you're going to look for a formula or a process, this is it. Hold it before the Lord. Mm -hmm. See or hear what he has to say concerning it. Amen. And then say and or do exactly what it is he just told you or instructed you, commanded you to say and or do, and how we said to say it and or do it. Amen. And then be flexible to God. In his name. Oh, yes. In, 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 amen, honey. Do it in his name. Put that, he gave you the seal of All approval to stamp name. it after you do what it is he said to say and do. That's right. And he is going to confirm and enforce and support and back up his name. Um, so, be positioned to be flexible and pliable to God. The Lord Jesus said, I would not have even come if the Father had not sent me. Mm-hmm. Which, And then we, again, in our um, springboard scriptures from last episode, John chapter 8, 20, verses 28 and 29, and verses 49 and 51, he told us he let the Father send him, dictate his itinerary, where he went, where he stayed, how long, what he did. He was telling us the formula and the secret to his success right then and right there, so that we could follow his example. But if you are moving in your agenda and you think, God, don't interrupt me with your business right now because I'm too busy doing your business, you're going (laughs) to miss those moments to be used by him to fulfill these dynamic plans. Mm -hmm. Brother Hagen, again, was on a totally different vein of thought, but he knew enough to be open to Holy Spirit and whatever the Lord said, he was there in service to obey that. That's how the victory had a pathway to come as well. But if we're so regimented and rigid, no, we're doing this, God, and you can't talk to me about anything else because I don't want to hear it right now because I'm busy or I'm tired or I'm going to get married or I'm changing a diaper, whatever if it is, if he can't interrupt us and interject with his mind and his thoughts and his desires, then we cannot be used for these exploits that we've been talking about. As we do these case studies, uh, I really sense we're going to have to look at uh, John chapter 11 with Lazarus uh-huh. because it goes into everything that we we're talking about here. So I want to preempt you to read the story of uh, the raising up of Lazarus, which is in John chapter 11, because it is, there's a considerable amount of verses. Yes, we'll, mm-hmm. we'll read it again here. Amen. But just so you, the Lord can already begin ministering to you, and um, um, no doubt we will be doing this or that case, a case study on that event so we can learn and grow and become more conformed to the image of Christ here in one of the upcoming episodes. Amen. Amen. Thank you for sharing that, honey. And yes, we will definitely um, cover Lazarus and how the Lord operated and ministered in what seems like one of the more difficult events um, of his ministry or miracles of his ministry. Well, I just want to tell you how much I love you guys. I know that I sound fiery when I start talking about things like this, but warfare 
is about getting down to business. Absolutely. And I hope you can hear my love for you. I hope you know that I'm not pointing my fingers and blaming you, but I'm talking to you just how the Lord talks to me and as frankly and succinctly as I can put it and giving you enough information and details as the Lord puts the words in my mouth so that you can actually grow. Because if I talk around the, the circles, if I sugarcoat it, and if I don't speak the truth about things, you won't have an opportunity to flourish like the Lord desires you to. Combat is not something that can be sugarcoated. <laughs> no. There's, a, there's an extremely serious nature concerning combat, and especially in the, as it pertains to the kingdom, spiritual warfare. So all of this is out of love and for you. So... We come through from victory to victory. Amen. Amen. Some some loving coaching for you. And, you know, we we get in there with the Lord and we let him minister. I want God to just be open with me. Just tell me, Lord, so we can, if I'm broken, you can put me back together. Just we just go ahead and tell me Jesus. So I, I want you to know how much we love you and how much more so, and more importantly, the Lord loves you. Again, Merry Christmas yes, to you Merry and your Christmas. family. <laughs> Merry, Merry, Merry Christmas. And we love and celebrate all of who our God is. We are so thankful for him being willing to put on flesh and come for our redemption and endure all that he did for our life and start it with him coming into the earth and being born. So I just, again, bless your households and your families with the joy and the peace of God that passes all understanding and a warm and happy celebration before the Lord and in the presence of God. We love you. God bless you. And remember to live your life in the Messiah's love. Want to know more about a day of prayer? Sign up for our newsletter where you'll get the latest updates on the ministry, inspiring messages, and coupon codes for the merch shop. Visit our website, adayofprayer.org. Click on connect in the menu bar and complete the form. Be sure to check the box that says subscribe.